If you've ever been to a truck show, there's a good probability you notice certain clicks that roll in together, kind of for the most part, stay together. I'm Fuller from Custom Offsets, and before we're even 10 seconds into this video, you're probably wondering if I stole this idea from Fitment Industries. And yeah, you're sort of right. But you see, here's the thing. They made a video about the very specific vehicles that you find at shows, but if I was to do that, I'd pretty much be like Chevy Silverado, uh, Dodge Ram, Ford F-150, and then just repeat myself with the three quarter tons because the big three kind of rule the truck market and therefore they rule the show scene too. Plus, Fitment Industries was kind of like our stepchild that we helped grow up a bit into what they are now, but like, you know, they're 18 now and they do what they want and they're never home, they don't answer my calls and the location's turned off on Snapchat and I never see them because they're in ghost mode and I don't see my Christmas time and they just don't get me anything, but I give them stuff, and it's just, ah, kids, I tell ya. Kicking things off, then we are covering the five types of vehicles that you find at a truck show. Now, let me get this out there. First things first, we don't care which category you fall into. If you've got wheels, tires, suspension, cool, that's good enough for us. And if you don't, you just go to our website, we can help you out with that stuff. It's kind of what we do. So first on the list is the stance crowd. Obviously had to pick these guys. Well, we put this first on the list because when custom offsets rolls up to a meet or a show, we are the stance crowd. I mean, we even started a truck club called Team Stance. These are the guys that are so done with 12 wides. They've moved on to 14 wides, 16 wides, massive wheels, massive lips, TS544 bros, the American Force gang, the Archon homies. You know, sure, they can't turn to get into the parking space, but that's just part of the game. Usually to go along with that look, you'll see these folks running a pretty large suspension lift, like I'm gonna say probably minimum of six inches, some on coilovers, some custom powder coated. These are the guys that live for the show scene. You'll see mud tires that have never seen the mud themselves, and you might see some stretched street tires, but the one thing in common on all trucks is that their wheels will be well far enough out of the fenders to anger the state patrol. Then of course you have the Jeep guys that venture out from their natural habitat to see what exactly is going on at the mall parking lot. Now, most of the Jeep crew can be found on the opposite side of the lot, away from the show trucks and the stancy boys, and they'll literally have their rigs parked on top of one another. Jeeps are not trucks, Jeeps are not SUVs. Jeeps are Jeeps and you just can't change that. I'd be willing to bet that if you do spot a gathering of Jeepers at your local event, you'll find at least a few of them with some 17 inch methods, a high lift jack and a rooftop tent. Does that mean this stuff gets used? Maybe. Is it just for looks? Maybe. But who are we to judge? I mean, all the super wide wheels are for you know, looks too. But for some reason, it seems like the Jeep guys and the truck guys just don't always get along. And that's why we started a new company for Jeeps, by the way, Trail Build. Number three is my Carolina fan. The squatted trucks, OEM reps, and straight pipe V8s just banging off the rev limiter. You see, the thing is, I actually lived in the Carolinas. It was super, super nice. I'd totally go back, but I'd work here, so I can't. But yeah, anyway. Then uh, there's Jared. Now, he's been a Wisconsin kid all his life, but then the internet came out and just brought all these cultures closer. And now he's got a six inch lift in the front of his Bronco and a four inch block in the rear, which is typical for your squatted crowd. In fact, there's even a number of people that don't have any lift in the rear and just a lift kit in the front, which by the way, if you're trying to do that, if you're trying to buy a lift on customoffsets.com, you don't see the button that says like, buy front only, that's because it doesn't actually exist and the manufacturers will still just sell and ship you the whole kit and it's really not any cheaper to just buy half. Pro tip. I feel like nine times out of 10, you're gonna find a younger guy driving one of these squatted like 99, 06, you know, GM trucks. And I blame Instagram and TikTok for creating this fad. I mean, have you guys seen the, let me hear your yee thing that's going around right now? So one guy in one truck's like, yo, let me hear your yee. And the other guy's like, all right. And he stomps on it and blah, 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 blah. He's like, oh, I can't hear you. So he does it again and just keeps going back and forth. And he's like, I can't hear your yee. Show me your yee. And then they just do a whole lot of yee and not a lot of haw. But deep down, somewhere in my heart, I do actually kind of like a little bit of squat if it's done right. I mean, it's like anything right. Like mom always used to say, everything is good in moderation. Switching gears again, we jump to the performance guys. And I'm talking about the lower truck performance guys because yes, you can have a lifted truck that also performs well when you equip it right, but it's just not the same as a boosted F-150 single cab ripping fat burnouts or 454 SS rumbling around or the reverse level Duramax on 12 wides and Nitto 420s, you know, cranked up to 11, just blowing smoke all over. 
And now that I say that, there's actually probably some folks rolling around in stock looking trucks that make nasty amounts of power too. So don't automatically shun the guy that's got stock wheels when he shows up. So I've actually got a buddy that's running uh, twins on an LS3 and I finally convinced him to buy wheels, uh, but he was running stockers for years. The entire thing looked stock, like stock paint, no stickers, none of that. And it had like 800 horsepower. It, it was absolutely crazy. And this video wouldn't be complete without paying respect to our elders. So the classic C10 fully restored gem, you know, it's driven by the old guy that takes it out, you know, two or three times a year, but he's owned the truck for like 40 years and he took it from nothing to a work of art. The cool thing here is that uh, as I spend more and more time getting to know people at different shows or going to SEMA or wherever I am, I'm finding younger people really interested in the classics too, which it never used to be that way. Now they might take it a different route and put it on air with some tucked wheels and modernize the interior a bit, but how can you not love a classic pickup? And as a special bonus round, I'll throw in that there's typically the one guy who shows up and ruins the fun for everyone, but doesn't really have a specific type of build because he's just that guy. And we've got to say, don't be that guy. Wheels, tires, suspension, you know the drill, customallsys.com. Peace.